Hi guys, John with you again. Uh, this time we're doing an unboxing. A new kit for me. It's a very, very old kit though. It's uh, to me is M41 Walker Bulldog. It's a kit from uh, back from 1975 is the original moulding for this kit. And like all to me and stuff, it actually says so on the box. It's the uh, M41 Walker Bulldog. It's called after General Walton Walker died in a jeep accident in 1950 in Korea and uh, it was quite extensively used uh, by many air armies but not really by the Americans to be quite honest with you they had limited use in Korea um, they came in right at the end of the Korean conflict they used them and they slowly sort of got rid uh, overtook the um, the M24 Chaffee uh, but by the time that uh, Vietnam came along they had say the um, patent tanks and they gave these to the uh, South Vietnamese army and uh, lots of other armies used them as well um, and they were quite like I said they were quite extensively used but the Americans didn't actually use them in Vietnam but the um, excuse me the South Vietnamese army did and things like that so when I build this, and I build this sort of uh, Vietnam with the American markings and American soldiers, I'm not exactly being totally correct when I do it. And I don't care. It's my kit, I'll do what I want with it. So anyway, let's get on to this, the unboxing for this. The box art, it's typical uh, to me as old fashioned box art, um, with a uh, an artist's rendition of the uh, M41. Uh, bulldog on the side it gives us a picture of the bulldog with a pile of Japanese writing and the date 1975 to Mia. Uh, side art is just a picture, picture of the box the other side it just gives more pictures of different tanks that they do the uh, Panzer 3 Matilda M4 Sherman and the Centurion and back to the other side, the exact side again. So let's have a look inside. That's what we're here for. We want to see what we get inside our inside the uh, inside the box. Already have had a look. It's not ex shall we say it's not an, a, a big parts count. <laughs> far far from it. A big parts count. Right, we get let's push the box up further a bit there, and we we'll get up my little blue card for zooming in. We start off. We get the lower hull, which is in tub form. All the uh, suspension is already moulded on for you, so you don't have to go building up any of that. Loads of little holes in the bottom here for um, to be filled up. It's all the uh, electrics for the, you know, the, to make it workable. These kids, when they come out in the 70s, even in the Far East, Japan and places like that, they used to love the, uh, the motorisation of them, <coughs> and in some countries as well. But they never really took on in Europe the motorization of them, so they just say rebox them as uh, build kits without the motors. But just left them, literally just left the motor out and gave it an option that you could buy through your model shop, through Tamiya, that you could buy the motor for them. But it, like I said, in Europe they never really took took off in Europe. So let's look at this tub. Um, yeah, the case got all the holes that you've got to go filling if you want to, you know look at the underside of your tank the um, the bits that you do see are actually quite nicely molded they're not bad at all you know um, considering like this tank is or this this kit was dirt cheap dirt dirt cheap I think I paid about 13 13 14 quid sterling for it um, you know and as kits goes that, that that is very very cheap the reason I'm doing this kit and the reason I got this kit for th like I said <coughs> is you can make a nice job out of the cheap old old kits okay they mightn't be um you know perfect with their moldings they mightn't be 100 percent accurate with their moldings but you end up with a nice you can end up take your time give it a good paint job nice bit of weathering you know you can give them you can do a nice job on a cheap old kit you don't have to go off and buy dragon kits. You don't have to go off and buy Ming and expensive brands. You can make a lovely, lovely job with a cheap kit. 
and here we go we've got a cheap kit here and we'll see can i make a lovely job of it well we'll see <laughs> we've got to just sort of stay tuned for that so the upper hull it's got all the um the boxes the exhaust and everything is already built on absolutely lovely very little work to do there <laughs> very little work to do anywhere in this kit believe it or not uh we've got our turret top and bottom Pull and all is molded onto it. <laughs> the second hatch is in there, closed down. All the vision ports are there, already molded in for you, so you don't have to worry about all of these little fiddly parts. They're not there, they're done for you. Right, we also get two rubber band tracks, which are the, uh, I presume, being the older to me, they're the meltable ones, they don't glue, but you know, they're not badly molded at all very little moulding on the inside that's just sort of typical all your moulding is on the on the um, the outer edge but I mean they fit together actually because they do don't they? they just they just pop together in a state so you know a bit of glue there'll be or a bit of uh, heat involved in them but the melting they'll be perfect absolutely perfect and they'll do the job um, we've got a sprue here this has got our figures like I said, the poor, poor old two chaps down here are World War Two uh, Americans. Um, but sure, what the hell? And we got our tank commander. I won't go in the spoon because I won't be using these. I'll be using the set that uh, Mr. Joe gave me, Joe's model kits. Um, but these are nice little figures for the spares box. They come in dead handy at some stage. And then we get down to the kit parts. <laughs> Look at that. One, sp one bag of sprue. That's it. Um, as you can see, I'm only just opening the, uh, the bag now. With the, uh, those horrible, nasty staples. Careful you don't fly out and take your eye out and all that kind of thing. There's a extra tail on the leaflet there. Be careful. Right. I've got a sheet of decals. We'll have a look at them in a minute. And we got two sprues, and that's and that's it. Two sprues. <coughs> Not a very uh, extensive parts list, as I said. We got our wheels, so let's have a let's have a little jolly down and have a look at these wheels. sprocket nice little moulding on it actually it's, you know it's uh, for its day it's actually quite good I don't I'm not seeing any flash I'm not seeing any ejector pin marks where they are going to be visible you know which is all, which is all good look at the other side the back side of them Quite nicely molded, just the turn rollers for the top and our big ones. So that's 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 really it for the uh, the sprue A, which has got our wheels on it, and sprue B <laughs> has got everything else. It's got a two-piece gun. Uh, lots and lots and lots of people can't stand the two-piece gun. They've the minute they see it, they go, oh, two-piece gun, I'm not using that. I'll go off and I'll buy an aftermarket. To me, those people were just, to be honest with you, just looking for a reason to buy an aftermarket in the first place. Um, I have no intentions of buying an aftermarket. Not for this one, anyway. Um, I get that gun right. I get, get it together, get rid of the seam line. And we'll be happy with that. I got a nice little fifth, nice not a badly moulded 50 cal there at all. Um, just zoom down into that and we can have a look. It's actually not badly moulded at all. Even the, uh, the little rivets along the bottom. And by the cocking handle there, they look quite nice. There's all our little handles. We've got some um, jerry cans, which are look they look quite good. We've got our front mantlet, the gun, we've got the command.
Andrews Hatch. We've got some Pioneer tools, some more little covers and things. The travel lock for the um, for the main gun. The tool rack, some spare tracks, some other little fiddly knobbly bits, the lights and stuff. And there we go. And that's it. That is literally it for the plastic. Um, if you haven't got this made in an afternoon, then there's something wrong. Because this, there, there's nothing, literally nothing in the making of this. Um, let's have a look at the instructions. We have two instruction sheets. This one is, uh, as you can see, it's in Japanese. I do not read Japanese. So, I won't look at those set of instructions. If you look at the other one, and the other set of instructions, they're in English, thank God. Uh, gives you a little bit of spiel about the... Um, M41 and other tanks, basically sort of uh, just a little kind of speed on American tanks, really, and tanks in general. Uh, more historical uh, bump, as John Sharp would call it. Um, and then we're into the construction. And there are a total of eight steps, that's including making the figures. Um, gives you some nice little pictures of the, the made up um, kit. Some marking options, one for the US Army, one, two there then for the Japanese Ground Self Defense Force. They give a, uh, quite a few of them to the Japanese Army as well. Because um, around that time, they were, you mean? They were the uh, the police force. The Americans were the police force in uh, in Japan, and they were starting to give the, Japan, the Japanese a bit of autonomy. And they started to uh, to build up their armed forces. And the Japanese ground self defence force started off with these uh, M41 Walker Bulldogs. All right, let's have a look at the uh, the decal sheet. We've got some nice little uh, Japanese flags. I'll say nothing. Everybody knows the joke about the Japanese flag, but I won't say anything about it. Um, yes, some not bad decals are printed by Tamiya. Um, so um, it's some of these older kits. What Tamiya did was they, you know, they they're still producing them. They're sticking the original dates on them and things like that. But they've upgraded their um, their decals to the to you know to better ones. Now these seem to be quite good, even though they do say it's sort of 1975 on them. I doubt, I sincerely doubt that these decals have been sitting in that box since 1975, if you know what I mean. Because the older decals, I know, were a lot thicker than that. And they actually look quite, quite thin. They look very nice indeed. So, there's the M41 Walker Bulldog taken out of its box and shown you what bits and pieces come with the kit. Um, as you can see it's this is one this is going to be a very very quick build. I should have this build painted and everything else by Monday. Hopefully if uh, if all else goes if all goes to plan we'll have it finished by Monday says you. So nothing more really I can say about the unboxing of that. It's unboxed. Um, isn't very very many parts it's got the uh, rubber DS tracks and uh, it looks okay for a start shall we say like I did say this is a cheap cheap kit you'll buy it for under 20 quid um, oh shut up sir we locked him out the back because he's after he did a whoopsie here on the floor and you know dog does a whoopsie dog goes out here so um, that's the M41 Walker Bulldog unboxing and uh, we'll have um, a build progress over the weekend and hopefully a reveal on Monday or Tuesday on that. So stay tuned because I will be doing uh, an unboxing on the figures. So, But for this one it's uh, time to sign off. Thanks all for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already subscribed. And uh, don't forget to give it a like or a dislike. That's your own prerogative. And don't forget my motto.
just go out and buy a kit and build it don't bother with all the aftermarket bits and pieces that you got to get for it buy a cheap kit build it get the old fun back into 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 your into your into your building um i find that with these cheaper ones you do have a bit more fun because you can you don't really mind too much if you make a mistake you can cover it up and just have fun with them so anyway lads that's me signing off catch you up in the next one stay tuned stay safe and be nice to each other lads <laughs>